Hi everyone, it's Christy, and in this video I'm just going to review the basic points of how to make a good and persuasive argument on YouTube or even in the YouTube comments. When you're constructing an argument, you are trying to make a specific point of view by making reference to evidence, and you're trying to be persuasive. Making an argument is far more than just putting out unsupported assertions and your opinion. And what do I mean by opinion? Your belief, judgment, or way of thinking about things that isn't necessarily supported by facts or even based in facts. Making an argument also involves more than just summarizing information or presenting information. It requires that you develop a coherent and cogent view, that you provide appropriate and relevant evidence, and then you make explicit the connection between that evidence and your argument. Before crafting your argument, there are some tips that you can use to make sure that you're on track. Can you summarize your main argument in one clear sentence? If you can't actually summarize what you're trying to convince people of, you're probably just babbling. <laughs> you're not making a coherent point. So before you start out, think, what is the one point that I really want to make in my argument? Get your evidence ready. If there is a study that you know that you want to use when making an argument, don't just write about a study that found. Cite the study, cite the source. So before you start to write your response, make sure you have the evidence and facts at hand. Be able to explain how the citations you provide link to your main argument. This again is part of the not just summarizing information. You can't, for instance, refute the wage gap by just providing a whole bunch of, of studies without saying how those studies relate to the question of the wage gap, because they might deal with incredibly expansive things. It might be 100-page documents. So if you're thinking of a particular piece of evidence, make sure you have it at hand and you're ready to connect it to your argument. Present the evidence you need to present, but only the evidence you need to present. Don't go wandering off into some sort of tangent, which has nothing to do with your main argument, because if you're doing that in a video, people will get confused as to why they clicked a video about A and you're talking about B. And if you're doing it in the comment section, people start to lose interest if you've gone off your main topic. Remember that well-constructed, persuasive arguments take time to formulate. Make sure you give yourself enough time and reflection in order to make the best argument possible. Definitions are always a good idea. Words, as you know, can have a lot of different meanings. Democracy in ancient Greece is not the same as democracy is practiced today. So having your definitions laid out in the beginning of your arguments, then making sure that you use that definition consistently and don't shift between into another definition during your arguments, or if you do, you signal that and explain why you're shifting. All of this will help reduce the amount of confusion between you and your audience. Think about the evidence that you're going to be using. Evidence can make or break your argument. And by evidence, I mean facts or other observed phenomenon that people have documented and reported in sources like news outlets or in empirical studies in academic journals. When considering what evidence to present, here are some tips on evaluating the strength of your evidence. Good evidence will be sufficient to sustain your assertions. So if you're making the argument about Western liberal democracies and you only cite US data or British data, you really can't justify making claims about Western liberal democracies based on two countries. You can make claims about what happens in those two countries, but you can't go beyond that. So make sure that the data that you're citing is actually sufficient to support the argument you want to make. It has to be precise. The data that you're using has to directly apply to the argument that you want to make. So using very vague or generalized studies that, or inappropriate studies, for instance, using studies on animals to draw conclusions about how human behavior is, these are not precisely analogous things. They're not precise in terms of how you can relate them to your arguments. So be critical about the kinds of evidence you're also employing. Data accuracy. It's important First, that you accurately present what is in the data, for instance, not misrepresenting it or only cherry picking parts of it while ignoring other bits that are relevant. There's also the question of whether or not the study itself is accurate and if there are problems with the studies or definitions with the studies that narrow or broadens the scope of the concept that you're talking about, that's important to be honest with your audience about as well. 
your evidence should also be representative. If you're going to be making wider claims, say about what feminists think, then you have to have data where people are identified as feminists and they've given answers to the questions that you're interested in, in answering. Don't cherry pick particular studies that find what you want when you know full well that there are studies out there that contradict it because people will catch you out saying, well, if you use study X, why didn't you use study Y? You have to be able to explain why your evidence is suitable for the argument you're making. And if you don't know that answer, if you picked it only because of bias, then people are gonna catch you out on that. And if people catch you out because they're distracted by the data that you've used rather than your arguments, you're going to be less persuasive. Having a rigorous attitude before you cite evidence and screening it against all these questions, knowing the answers as to the strengths and the limitations of your data, because all data have strengths and limitations, allow you to present a confident and persuasive argument. Anticipate counter arguments. You can strengthen your argument by in advance considering what people might say as an objection to it or raising concerns about it. And by thinking through that process, you can reevaluate your own claims and also decide strategies for dealing with counter arguments. This is as easy as saying, well, how might a reasonable person disagree with me on this point? And if there are problems with your data, for instance, you should have a good answer to the question as to why these data, despite these objections, should be used. For instance, maybe the study is 10 years old. And people will say, well, that's not the most current data, so I don't know if that is the best way to make the argument. You might say, yes, the data is 10 years old, but it is more comprehensive and far-reaching than any study that has been done since then. So even though it's timely, we can say more accurate things using the study than we can in subsequent studies. That's just an example, but at least it shows that you've become aware of the problem, you've looked into it, you've thought about it, and you've come to a conclusion that is justifiable based on the method or your approach, and you're still connecting it to your own argument. Acknowledging a valid critique and having a confident, well-informed response to that critique actually makes your argument more persuasive, not less. It is okay to reject somebody else's critique of what you're doing as long as you can give justifications and reasons why you're doing it. When you're anticipating counter-arguments, present them in a way that is charitable don't set up straw men to fight against. Presenting someone's objection fairly and objectively rather than ridiculing them or focusing on a very minor point shows the confidence you have in your own understanding and your own evidence behind it. Taking valid critiques seriously and having a good robust response to that shows the depth of your understanding and the confidence you have in making your argument. When presenting the counter arguments for your data, pick robust ones. Don't pick really weak and superficial ones. Show that you're willing to engage with more, more profound critiques, again, because you have the confidence of understanding within your own evidence and your own argument. It may be the case that after going through this process, you have adjusted your main argument a little bit to take into account anticipated critiques or counter arguments against it. If that's the case, then you need to go back to the starting point and start with your revised statement. So what you don't want to do is present statement A and then go through all the valid critiques that there is and then end up with a statement B that you end up defending for the rest of the video or the rest of your comment. If you make those revisions, do them from the start. Acknowledge those things or be prepared to acknowledge those things from the start rather than presenting an argument and then shifting it halfway through your video or halfway through your comments. In the department where I did my PhD, one of the academics had a favorite little saying, nobody cares what you think, only what you can demonstrate. If you're happy just to express an opinion and to not be persuasive, that's fine. You can write comments and make videos just expressing your opinion. But if you want to persuade people, I think that's a really good phrase to keep in mind. Nobody cares what I think, only what I can demonstrate because it is through evidence and the connections of evidence to arguments that people are persuaded. Sometimes people, I guess, are persuaded by the force of someone else's personality, but personally, I like to know why I believe what I believe and why I've come to the decisions I have, and that includes understanding the evidence that underpins my opinions and informs my worldview. And if that's important to you too, then I hope you found this video interesting and helpful.
Until the next time we speak, I've been Christy, you've been awesome, and I'll talk to you really soon. Bye.